November 5th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Ezekiel chapters 25 and 26 from the Old Testament. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, turn toward the Ammonites and prophesy against them. Say to the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. You said, Aha, about my sanctuary when it was desecrated, about the land of Israel when it was made desolate, and about the house of Judah when they went into exile. So take note, I am about to make you slave of the tribes of the east. They will make camps among you and pitch their tents among you. They will eat your fruit and drink your milk. I will make Rabbah a pasture for camels and Ammon a resting place for your sheep. Then you will know that I am the Lord. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Because you clapped your hands, stamped your feet, and rejoiced with intense scorn over the land of Israel, take note, I have stretched out my hand against you, and I will hand you over as plunder to the nations. I will cut you off from the peoples and make you perish from the lands. I will destroy you. Then you will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Moab and Seir say, Look, the house of Judah is like all the other nations. So look, I'm about to open up Moab's flank, eliminating the cities, including its frontier cities, the beauty of the land, Beth Jeshimoth, Baal Meon, and Kiriathaim. I will hand it over along with the Ammonites to the tribes of the east, so that the Ammonites will no longer be remembered among the nations. I will execute judgments against Moab. Then they will know that I am the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Edom has taken vengeance against the house of Judah. They have made themselves fully culpable by taking vengeance on them. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. I will stretch out my hand against Edom, and I will kill the people and animals within her, and I will make her desolate from Teman to Dedan. They will die by the sword. I will exact my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. They will carry out in Edom my anger and rage. They will experience my vengeance, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. The Philistines have exacted merciless revenge, showing intense scorn in their efforts to destroy Judah with unrelenting hostility. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Take note, I'm about to stretch out my hand against the Philistines. I will kill the Cariathites and destroy those who remain on the sea coast. I will exact great revenge upon them with angry rebukes. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I exact my vengeance upon them. In the eleventh year, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, because Tyre has said about Jerusalem, Aha, the gateway of the peoples is broken. It is swung open to me. I will become rich now that she has been destroyed. Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am against you, O Tyre. I will bring up many nations against you as the sea brings up its waves. They will destroy the walls of Tyre and break down her towers. I will scrape her soil from her and make her a bare rock. She will be a place where fishing nets are spread, surrounded by the sea. For I have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. She will become plunder for the nations, and her daughters who are in the field will be slaughtered by the sword. Then they will know that I am the Lord. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Take note that I am about to bring King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, King of Kings, against Tyre from the north, with horses, chariots, and horsemen, an army, and hordes of people. He will kill your daughters in the field with the sword. He will build a siege wall against you, erect a siege ramp against you, and raise a great shield against you. He will direct the blows of his battery rams against your walls and tear down your towers with his weapons. He will cover you with the dust kicked up by his many horses. Your walls will shake from the noise of the horsemen, wheels, and chariots when he enters your gates, like those who invade through a city's broken walls. With his horse's hooves he will trample all your streets. He will kill your people with the sword and your strong pillars will tumble down to the ground. 
They will steal your wealth and loot your merchandise. They will tear down your walls and destroy your luxurious homes, your stones, your trees, and your soil. He will throw into the water. I will silence the noise of your songs. The sound of your harps will be heard no more. I will make you a bare rock. You will be a place where fishing nets are spread. You will never be built again, for I, the Lord, have spoken, declares the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to Tyre. Oh, how the coastlands will shake at the sound of your fall, when the wounded groan at the massive slaughter in your midst. All the princes of the sea will vacate their thrones. They will remove their robes and strip off their embroidered clothes. They will clothe themselves with trembling. They will sit on the ground. They will tremble continually and be shocked at what has happened to you. They will sing this lament over you. How you have perished. You have vanished from the seas. O renowned city, once mighty in the sea, she and her inhabitants who spread their terror. Now the coastlands will tremble on the day of your fall. The coastlands by the sea will be terrified by your passing. For this is what the Sovereign Lord says. When I make you desolate like the uninhabited cities, when I bring up the deep over you and the surging waters overwhelm you, then I will bring you down to bygone people. To be with those who descend to the pit, I will make you live in the lower parts of the earth, among the primeval ruins, with those who descend to the pit, so that you will not be inhabited or stand in the land of the living. I will bring terrors on you and you will be no more. Though you are sought after, you will never be found again, declares the Sovereign Lord. God, Ezekiel 26 is but one of many, many prophecies throughout the Bible. Uh, prophecies that have come true and come true to exacting detail. Uh, it's just a, a wonderful way that you have given us an opportunity to hold on to something that is of truth. We should just have faith and just believe in you. But we are humans and we need to be given proof of everything and I think the prophecies is one of the many ways that you do that in Ezekiel 26 it talks a lot about Tyre about what's going to happen to it that King Nebuchadnezzar is going to destroy the main city um, that the debris of the city is going to be thrown into water and that that city would become bare rock that many nations not just one, but many nations would come against Tyre and that the city would never, ever be rebuilt, but that fishermen would spread their nets over the site. And what I find absolutely fascinating about this is every single one of those came true. And every single one of those came true, but not at the exact same time, um, but over time, sort of like how you work in our life over time. It's not just a one-time thing and, and we're good to go. It, it's completely over time. So we know way back in... <laughs> 573 BC that King Nebuchadnezzar uh, came and uh, Tyre is kind of two places it's a little bit odd so there's a mainland city and then uh, there's a place that's like an island off the coast and Nebuchadnezzar came after the main city uh, for a, a little over a dozen years but during that time of the siege many people of that main area fled and a lot of them fled to that island that's just off the coast um, but Nebuchadnezzar, after, after 12 years, defeated that particular area, that mainland part of Tyre. A little bit later, a couple hundred years later, 332 BC, we know that Alexander the Great showed up. And he was all set to take on Tyre. And he got to the, to the main city and found it had been completely abandoned. It was all in ruins. And he was actually taunted by the people on the island who had fled the original mainland city. Well, Alexander the Great, as we know, was one of these big military guys who had a really big ego that went with it, and he didn't take too kindly to that. So he took the rocks from the debris of the destroyed city and built a causeway, a road out to the island, thus fulfilling another one, another piece of the prophecy that the debris of the city was going to be thrown into water. He literally threw it into the water to make a path for his army to get to this island to destroy those people. 
And it wasn't just his army he called on. He actually had the power to call on many nations to destroy Tyre. Again, another piece of that prophecy. We know that Tyre was completely destroyed uh, during the Crusades uh, around 1290 AD. Um, and it was never, the ancient city was never ever rebuilt. Again, part of the prophecy. Uh, the only thing that is is actually there, and it's not even really there, but the only thing today you can see there is a fishing village where fishermen dry out their nets on top of the rocks. Again, that final part of the prophecy. One of the, the things I love is the stories of the prophecies. I, I already have faith. I already know that what you say is true. I completely believe in the Bible. But when we're talking to other people, sometimes being able to talk about these prophecies and the results of these prophecies is powerful in either new believers' lives or people who haven't come to faith yet, that that's part of that process. Uh, and again, this is just one tiny story amongst so many other prophecies that you gave that you gave to us throughout the Bible. One of the things that always sticks in my heart, though, that uh, I had read somewhere having to do with prophecy is prophecy is great. It's a great way to prove things to unbelieving uh, human beings. Uh, but he said, is your life enough evidence to convince anyone of the reliability of the Bible? And I think that that's probably way more important uh, then the prophecy story. It's always great to have these facts to back things up. Um, and even, you know, the Dead Sea Scrolls are just an incredible example of some of the most recent findings that we've been able to use to prove certain things. But in today's day and age, does my life, how I live it, what I say, what I do, does it back up what the Bible says? Um, is how I live my life a reflection of that truth? God, please, please intentionally allow me to look at my life and show me anything in my life that isn't reflecting you, that isn't reflecting your grace, your mercy, your kindness, most of all, your love to other people. There's some things I know already, and I, you know, I'm already working on those things, but I know there's other things that aren't clear to me yet. And God, I just ask that you take a look at my heart and my life. I want to be a living example of how powerful the truth is of your word. I want people to be able to look at my life and be a living testimony uh, to the reliability of the truth in the Bible. And if there's anything stopping people from that because of, of something I've done, something I've said, a, a certain way I'm living, then please show that to me so that I can change it, God. What a powerful duty and a joy-filled opportunity it is to be one of your disciples who makes disciples. In your son's name I pray, amen.